to welcome to another edition of Kaijudo Corner. I'm your host, Zero Magnumex. It's going to be a quick deck profile. I noticed I haven't been doing a lot of these lately. So I figured I'd help you guys out and give you guys my thoughts on a new deck. Give you guys thoughts on the meta since Dragon and... Or sorry, Dragon Trick and Furnace has been released. And without further ado, here's the deck and then I'll share my thoughts afterwards. So I think this is Kajito Corner number 9, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, we have three Chasm Entanglers, three Blinder Beetle, and three Cobalt the Star Knight. That's my Enforcer package. It seems to work pretty well. Okay, now we have blockers, three Star Lantern, and two Grand Guru. Two Keeper of Dawn. Two Lyra. And one Andromeda. That's Light Civilization. I was trying Storm Spark Blast out. I never liked it, to be honest. I, I like having a bit more of an aggressive pull toward control. Uh, I like to be able to attack when I need to, and with Lyra in there, it helped me lock down an, op an opposing problem creature, and it has Double Breaker, and I'm able to attack with it. So, for Water Civilization, we have one Rizalka. After testing and testing and testing, one is the right number for me. One Crystal Memory, because, you know, they're 20 a pop, so... One is one. Two search adepts. Three logo skins. And three spy mission. That's the water civilization here's darkness. So we have two fumes. Two razor kinder puppets. And one skull shatter. That's my discard package. And then for removal. Just straight up, we have three Bone Blades and three Terror Pit. That's Darkness. The deck itself is very simple upon thinking about how it's constructed and everything else. So, really, what I've seen impact the meta thus far is Lyra, Andromeda, Infernus, and Herald of Infernus. And, I mean, that's really it. The birds are cute. They're helpful. But I think against a real and consistent deck, those decks might have a tendency to fall apart. So my evaluation of the Kaijudo meta right now is that the original decks that people built got better, and that's what they should be focusing on. Wishing Dragons, which is basically big dragons that use Bottle of Wishes are fine, but it's really luck dependent. And I just have that strong feeling that they're going to lose to more consistent decks. I mean, you're always going to have the possible blowout games where, you know, you're going to end up saying, Oh, look, here's my casting of Bottle of Wishes. Oh, look, Andromeda hit the board. You know, I mean, there is always that possibility. But I think in most circumstances, it's probably not going to be that exact circumstance. I think you're better off pinning down your opponent's creatures with things like Spark Cage and and tap type cards and attacking with Herald of Infernus and dropping Infernus onto the battlefield than you are playing Bottle of Wishes off of... or trying to get Andromeda off of Bottle of Wishes. So that's my thoughts. I hope you guys like the, the deck itself. It's very simplistic. I took it down to 40 cards. I'm testing it at 40. It seems to work well. You have to know what you're doing, though. Otherwise, you can lose really quick. I've been testing it against Mono Red Drakens. I've been testing it against, basically, Dark Saber Bolts. And as long as I play the deck correctly, more often than not, I can win. If I play the deck incorrectly and I don't anticipate moves, the deck loses very hard. So, that's what I have together for right now. It's still kind of a work in progress, but I'm trying my best to learn the game. I mean, I've only 
been in it for about a month and a half now maybe two months so I'm still learning the game itself the mechanics what's good what isn't good and reading articles and all that and I hope you guys enjoyed this Kaijudo Corner segment and have a good day have a good night and peace out YouTube Zero Magnum X is gone later everybody